on a list a little similar to one Brad championed, I think, uh, a week or so ago. I'm not sure. I honestly haven't read Brad's latest article on the topic. So uh, the big changes are only to the sideboard. That's about all he messes with these days. No. You're a busy man. I'm sure he'll forgive you for <laughs> not getting to it immediately. Uh, and so Tyrell uh, Wheeler, his opponent, is playing a blue-white red yep. flash. And he is on Aurelia, the war leader, as opposed to Boros Reckoner, a shift oh, that uh, Jerry Thompson has gone on record as saying he dislikes significantly. Doesn't know how anyone wins with Aurelia. Uh, let's see if Tyrell figures out a way. <laughs> Uh, so we've gone Lango, Lango, and Teddy is now uh, playing a, a Blood Artist. He's setting up Sacrifice Engine. He's got Lingering Souls in his hand. Looks like he's also got a Boros Reckoner. And is that an Obsidat? I think it's Obsidat. It is Obsidon. an Obsidat. He has a Council of Ghosts up there. Yep. Uh, we also have a Orzov Charm and possibly a second Lingering Souls over there. Uh, Tyrell is playing a... Augur of Bolas. Land, land, restoration angel. That's a brick. Yeah. And a sad brick. Those are the cards you want to draw with this deck. <laughs> Pillar Flame for the Blood Artist is a nice one. Doesn't even trigger because it doesn't die. That's accurate. And Teddy does Stranded. not have a third land. Yeah, that's that's tough in this matchup. You actually board in an extra land if you... Uh, Teddy's Deckless has a Cavern of Souls in the sideboard for the purpose of when you bring in all those five drops, yep. principally Obzat and Thundermaw Hellkite, because against the control decks, it both makes them uncounterable and helps ensure you cast them, which uh, really you couldn't ask for more from a land, I don't yeah. think. So Teddy's going to have a chance to catch up here because Tyler's, Tyrell is not going to be able to close things out. Yeah, he's playing Blue Red Flash. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a slow strategy, relies on generating a lot of card advantage for a long game. Uh, he does, however, have you know all these pillars. He's keeping the board clean, and he has a Sphinx's Revelation already in his hand. So uh, once he starts getting those rolling, which I would expect to begin on the next turn, to be honest, uh, Teddy's going to be needing to catch up fast. So this is a start. Teddy draws his third land. It's a Goblet Shrine that's going to enable him to cast the Boros Reckoner, or potentially a Lingering Souls. Looks like he's going to go for the Lingering Souls. Possibly like baiting a counter spell here um, because he believes the Boros Reckoner is more important, or just you know worried about not opening himself up to uh, Wrath of God. To I think in this matchup, uh, the, the ability to go to the face is actually just really valuable for the aristocrat. So he doesn't want to expose Boros Reckoner as an aggressor that will get Wrath the first time around. Mm -hmm. uh, really wants to hold him. Hopefully, just force his opponent to play a verdict and then drop a reckoner when, like, he can untap and threaten an act on the next turn or something along those or lines. Or just be able to combo kill. Yeah, in a single turn. Yeah. That's difficult in this particular matchup because Blue Eyed Flash is so creature light uh, that actually getting enough guys on the board to blasphemous act on the cheap is very tough. Although, with two lingering souls ready for flashback, yep. that may be an option. He can definitely uh, build himself a pseudo ritual that way. So we did see Tyrell cast the Sphinx's Revelation yep. on the turn that you predicted it. Uh, and we drew another one along with an Is It Staticaster, which is Ooh, a boy, stone that's blowout. a big game. Yeah. That's about uh, just a disaster for Teddy. Yeah. Can't really think of anything worse. We've got the get these out of here motion from Tyrell. All right. A Thundermon big Hellkite dragon. is no good. He's, yeah. he's into a corner now. Boris Reckoner is really the only play he has available. I think he has a Cartel Aristocrat in his hand as well, but uh, that's pretty mediocre in the matchup without some kind of uh, backup to keep it protected. Yeah, it looks like he's drawing a second Obsidat, so yep. he's, he's really five flooded over there. He is rolling on fives, but uh, I don't think that he's actually locked out of the match, you know? Like, if he gets one of those guys down, Obsidat can be incredibly difficult to deal with. Tyler, Tyrell's basically going to be forced to race it. Yep. Um, and so. See, we see a fourth land draw on Teddy's part. Given that you have two elves, that's do you just start running them out, or do you wait to hit one of your caverns in order to guarantee that it's not going to be I, I think you just got to run him out, especially when you're so far behind in this particular game. Uh, he's going to go ahead and lead Aristocrat here. Uh, he's not going to have a chance to play it, ideally, if this game continues. Oh. So we have yet another static caster, so now all the two toughness creatures yeah. are in the danger zone. And Tyrell continues with the anemic Augur of Bolas beatdown. Yeah, I think he has an Aurelia in his hand, which I wouldn't be surprised to see that come down next turn after he Sphinx's revs during the end step on this turn, as that'll put Teddy on a, a really steep clock. Yeah. Um, and by, by waiting a turn, he's able to leave up some counter magic in order to handle something. 
Uh, so we do see the cavernous souls drawn by Teddy, and he's able to make his Amstadat uncounterable. The question is, is that going to be good enough against the, the Aurelia? Cavern on Spirit. I prefer Advisor, but you know, that's just me. <laughs> Well, you gotta be able to get your uh, cartel or scripts. Yeah, you gotta dodge well. those spell snares. <laughs> uh, the Sphinx's revelation does indeed resolve Tyrell going up a, a fair bit on life and certainly on cards in hand. And yeah. now he's setting some options up for himself. Wants to see what he can do. Looks like he's interested in keeping Morland Haunt available. Uh, an um, attack with Aurelia this turn is eight, which threatens exactly lethal next turn if Obzat blinks out again and yeah. Teddy has nothing. So Teddy's going to go down to six here. Mm -hmm. uh, in his upkeep, is going to go back up to eight from Obstadat. Uh Tyrell's going to go down to 16. And at this point, like, does he... I mean, he, he just needs chump blockers. He needs something to deal with that Aurelia he, immediately. He has to kill Aurelia. He does have Orzhov Charm. I imagine he's just going to be forced to play it. Yep. Uh, take the three, go to three. Uh, but, you know... That's all Tyrell has. Like he can just defeat that Augur Pulse racing with the Obsidat. It's actually not that bad for him. So we have here we have the Orzov charm, and then we potentially can get in with Obsidat. I'm not sure if we wanted to open ourselves up to a uh, an Azorius charm here. I think that we can't really afford to do that this turn. Next turn we could maybe afford to do. life gain is just too important at this yeah. point. We don't want to open ourselves up to any more. Especially going down to four here. It is also theoretically possible that you just decide this is one of those games where you're just after going to get insanely lucky to win, and that's why you jam there. Uh, I don't think Teddy's right in that spot yet. I, I think he can actually still legitimately win this game as crazy as it seems. I think I disagree with you. I think we're in the insanely lucky point of the game <laughs> right here. I mean, you look at the number of cards in Tyrell's hand, you know, his primary win condition isn't necessarily sure. Augur Bull is beat down, yet that is what is threatening to take over right now. And I, I do agree with that. Uh, the reason I say it is the the blue or red deck is not really, you know, capable of capitalizing against an Obzat especially. It's not good at racing it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the reasons that it's, you know, part of Brad's cyborg strategy. It's so powerful in the matchup against uh, both this deck and Esper. It just changes the game a lot. And... You see how now this auger is basically shut down. It's not actually effectively racing. Tyrell's leaning on these is it static casters, and they're sweet and all, but eventually Teddy will find the Blasphemous Act. He'll be able to get rid of those, and then his Lingering Souls will still exist. They'll come back. Uh, so Tyrell is actually under pressure to find a new threat in order to start closing things out. And the race changes here with a Thunder Mahokite as well. Yep. And Teddy is playing around the Azorius charm here. Um, number 14. Tyrell's going to try and find one. Think twice. Finds it. Finds it. Yeah. That's a good card for him. He's going to go ahead. Well, actually, it's not even that great because his plan is to Morland Haunt this turn in the end step uh, to get in an additional damage. So if he Azorius charms the Thunderbolt, he's just going to lose his spirit on the next turn. Yep. Which is awkward, but that's probably better than taking five damage. In fact, he may go with a Think Twice flashback instead if he doesn't prioritize that point of damage. Yeah, well, he doesn't have... Yeah, so, sorry. So we, we flashback Think Twice, draw an extra card... No, he, he went don't. with the, the Aurelia instead. He was considering a Think Twice, I think. Made, okay. his, uh, made his spirit. So at this point, are we looking for a Searing Spear to try to close things out? Searing Spear would be fantastic. Uh, he just drew a Restoration Angel, I believe. I would probably just blink that Augur and try and get the spear before the Obzidat comes back. There's not really a lot of reason to not try that. Get in for two, blink it, and then you... Oh, we're doing something potentially before happens. we attack. What are we doing? Is flashbacking the think twice now? Also a fine play. Yeah. Finds land. He's got a, got a couple of those still. You'll note he has two Supreme Verdicts in his hand, but Teddy has basically sidestepped the power of that card. Through Obzidat. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually not that great post-board. One of the reasons is that the blue or red flash deck finds itself relying on Static Caster to answer Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls naturally good against Supreme Verdict. So you have this really awkward triangle where you know they play Lingering Souls to beat your Verdict, you play Static Caster to beat their Souls, but then your Verdicts aren't good really anymore. Bad, yeah. Your other the other creatures start getting powerful, uh, and you wind up having to Verdict your own Static Casters or just not cast Verdict. Neither of which is an ideal scenario. So. 
perhaps in, at some point in the future, the, the matchup revolves to actually sideboarding out the uh, Supreme Verdicts in, the, in this matchup and try and find a better answer to Obstinat. Uh, I, I don't think you... You definitely want to keep some of them just because it's a good rec, a good answer to like a Reckoner Hurt High Priest kind of board, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not the best card by any, any stretch. So we recast the dragon. It's going to kill the spirit, and the dragon's going to come in again. Yep. And it looks like Harold doesn't have an answer to it this time, but at the end of the turn, he's going to flash in the Restoration Angel yep. and increase his clock. It's a real threat. Uh, if he finds Searing Spear, our life totals are changed a little. Long. I'm just going to go ahead and confirm that he finds Searing Spear, and that's the game. Yeah. yeah. I, I was pretty sure Searing Spear was still lethal. Teddy needed another turn of uh, reprieve in order to dodge it, but he ca he came very close to coming back there, as you saw. Yeah. No, uh, you were you were right. Uh, it was a lot closer than it looked, and that that was the power of Obstinat, backed by a cavern of souls, to make sure that yeah. you know it gets down. It's a Obstinat very hard to big deal game. With threat. Uh, interestingly enough, if Teddy had actually decided to jam his Obstinat attacks, uh, heedless of Azorius Charm, might have been able to sneak it in. 